so uh this was just background so uh, yeah I'm, I'm i'm coming at this I, i'm not that technical so I'm, I'm not being bogged down by all the technical stuff too much um I've, I've done one machine learning course on coursera so i'm an i'm, I'm an expert i'm not um you get the point so i understand it enough to get what's going on but i'm not going to be sort of bogged down by the uh, all the minutiae um this is kind of what i'm doing in my job role at the minute is trying to bring together lots of different disciplines and departments um and sort of coordinate them together um again i this I've, I've been in the group for about 36 hours so if there's if there are things that you you know i'm being too critical of by all means shout but i'll again, stop you right there and i'll tell you please be as radically honest and you know blunt as no. possible um especially with the admin team and team lead leaders um yeah. probably not the best idea to be like that with the newcomers because no, 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 no. they're not ready for that but no. internally we're kind of we're seeing the pattern of cultivation of this mm -hmm. new type of environment where we're mm. cutting off all the bullshit and we're just you know yeah. saying yeah, what what, yeah. what has to be said yeah it's, it's it's strange um the only thing that i know i've never done any collaborative work like this before except in, in work do you know what i mean so uh, you know I, I, but anyway um so yeah just as, as um joining all the information is completely disunited um there's no one place to look um it's something even uh, um like a, a 10 page presentation without overbearing on these people because it is it's so overwhelming where do i go all this sort of stuff anyway um i know we're working on the onboarding stuff um but anyway everything is everywhere and it just it needs bringing together a little bit um uh, yeah I suggest we could simplify it i think i've tried to explain in that presentation um just how we can characterize what it is that we're doing um, maybe we can jump into the uh, presentation, the visual one. Sure, and sure. And quickly skim through it. Yeah, uh, we can do that. By the way, I'm recording this call as all the calls that are happening because Great. I do mm -hmm. believe this is the only way for us to scale knowledge in, sure. you know, in a way. And obviously yeah. there has to be some infrastructure to support uh, navigation of all those videos mm -hmm. but I soon believe in a week from now we're gonna have so many videos so many different things we're gonna have to tag them and just you know do you want to learn about Corona uh, vision here are mm -hmm. clips and bytes about that you want to learn mm -hmm. about our you know uh, communication pieces here's the bite you want to learn about Kaggle challenges here it goes mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah this is what i'll put together so this is from 36 hours of me just sort of floating around and trying to establish you know what what what, what i what i can see what i can observe um and obviously the why we're here thing um primarily to respond to the cord 19 cable challenge blah 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 you saw this um and help uh, answer some medical questions of course um it's not really why we're here we're actually here to um join the global fight against covid19 and because we're all pretty decent people and we're all deep down nerds and a bit geeky and it's enjoyable at the same time as we're doing some good um so that's why we're really actually here um but of course as i said it was fairly obvious to anybody who understands statistics that this was going to happen. It has been, it's been happening over the last few decades. It's fairly obvious. Um, and we should be thankful that it isn't more fatal than it is. That's not to downplay just how serious it is, but it could have been a lot, lot, lot worse and it's going to happen again. So whatever we do now, um, whatever platform we create, whatever it is that we produce, um, we need to, you know, there's no reason that we shouldn't consider future outbreaks and not limit it to just Kaggle or just COVID-19. Um, and similarly, if we can um, create something that is so powerful that we can uh, widen the scope and the application to medicine and health in general, um, we, we are, it is, we, we are then at that point starting to sort of get into very deep deep and clever search algorithms and, and search patterns and the rest of it but 
who knows? Um, who knows? It, 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 but the important thing is that we need to keep that in mind. Um, so just where it is that we're actually going, we don't want to handcuff ourselves in order to answer a few Kaggle questions. Not again, not to play down the importance of uh, Kaggle, but we don't want to uh, uh, um, restrict ourselves further down the line because we've we've put too much emphasis on Kaggle and not enough on the 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 the, uh, the final the end goal. Um, so uh, yeah, what might it be? This was just a, a very finger in the air sort of guess at maybe something. I'm, I'm probably not thinking as ambitiously as as as, as we probably should. Um, but I effectively see it as a just some central uh, GUI, whatever. Put in your search terms. All manner of data and knowledge is just it does the thinking and the searching. The the, the 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 grunt work for the people that need to see what they need to see it does out all the filtering um um so that the people who need to see what what, what they need to see get it yeah i love so, this part because you mentioning that it's not just a search engine we're oh. not looking to build a, a google that just searches you know keywords mm -hmm. and relevant pieces we're trying mm -hmm. to like we have a shot at creating something much more powerful mm -hmm. I think that's, 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 that's what it is. I mean, again, you know, I've put down here relevant sentences, paragraphs, sections, and papers, but it's, it's, it's endless. Maps, um, you know, it's just, it's just everything. Genetic, I don't know, genetic code. Who, who knows? Who knows where it goes? But um, yeah, so at the minute, this is something I'll come on to is, is, is the, the members that we've got. It's, yeah, 800 members. 80% um, of them probably aren't active. It's great that you've got 800 members and 800 people's emails and maybe we can get some of them back on the game. Um, most of them probably aren't active and 80% of the active members are probably only contributing 20%. Um, and it's, again, it's not a criticism. This is all voluntary, completely understand that. Um, and it's a natural, you know, breakdown because you mm. know, even on the internet, we have majority of people just passively consuming and reading information and not that many write reviews or comment or produce mm -hmm. content so i i feel that that's a natural thing and we kind of have to solve that problem of matching people more effectively and onboarding them to the right places to maximize their potential and impact sure um what this again what what it doesn't tell us is is just who's who are the people outside here that well they'd have to interact on github i guess somehow um but there are also people that aren't very vocal that are probably still doing work talking about it doesn't matter what they're doing they're still contributing so we shouldn't be focused too much on how much people interact on these channels it's more about what they're doing and we should be careful not to neglect those people and put them into this group unfairly um, just because they're not visible um so um, I'll, I'll do this last one first and then and then I'll, I'll i'll do some drawing but these are all the task descriptions well it's pop that I've, I've, I've taken extracts from each of the task descriptions um and this leads me on to just how we're structuring the work that we're doing um all of these tasks are essentially the same um and the the common phrase across all of them is is this we want to know what the literature reports about um and so it makes me wonder whether splitting it down by question is perhaps i know it's a bit late now but perhaps the wrong approach um because if if you can, if we can create something that allows you to ask a question about vaccines and therapeutics or input your own keywords or virus genetics and the rest of it, then we don't have to limit ourselves to even these four tasks. Um, and so there's, a, there's a, like I said, there's a common thread to all of them, which is this. Um, so that's it's just an idea. I think, I yeah, think you get, I, you get I, what I'm trying to say. I think that's a very valid concern. And I 
I think it's actually true, except like there is a power to prioritization and filtering mm -hmm. that enables us to move as fast as we're, you know, sure. pushing forward. And I, it's hard to explain to me why that is mm -hmm. happening, but mm -hmm. essentially I think that's a general approach to deal with, uh, you know, things that are inherently complex. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you monitor back to the progress how all this thing started, it started mm -hmm. simply from uh, the, the idea that I've introduced that, hey, we have 10 tasks with so many questions. Let's try and you know, filter that out to top three, four, just sure. so we can wrap our heads around the problems. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the initial filtering in itself, mm -hmm. and it really worked. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me right now we're also kind of converging to the same like commonalities, you know, which is yes. great to see, but I don't think we would approach uh, we would reach this stage if we wouldn't branch out into these specifically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I understand I understand what you're saying. You started vertically and then sort of um so yeah, um it's not that one. It's not that one either. It's not that one. So I, I see, I see, so we've got um, task, task one, two, three, four. What I can see happening now is that in, in each of these, we've got a bit of visualization going on. Um, and we've also got the, the SMEs uh, um, and, and the, the actual specific knowledge, um, as well as, as well as all the, the, machine learning pipelines and, and all that sort of stuff and it seems to me that because the, like I say what, what we're maybe better doing um, is transposing that whole frame and working like this so that we can leverage you know the the, the combined effort but it, you, you get the principle and I understand that you know how, how you know how we I think are it's here emerging here. naturally. The first piece that emerged by itself due to the nature of data is the machine learning piece. And mm -hmm. that's why we have the NLP stack uh, channel. I'm not okay. sure if you've seen that. It's private for a reason, mm -hmm. just because when mm -hmm. people jump into Slack, we don't want mm -hmm. them to be overwhelmed by, you know, some crazy complex things that, you know, are hard to explain why we're doing them. That's yep. essentially where Brendan is working on the data set, on the pre-processing of all of that mm -hmm. and doing such an amazing job, you know, preparing everything for all of these four tasks. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. essentially what you're describing. I uh, think it, it, it is, sorry. Yeah, I think the other piece that emerged was the visualization and data viz team. Mm -hmm which essentially mm -hmm. is working to create something repeatable and reusable across different teams. I yes. think we're still early in, in that department. And mm -hmm. I think what's currently missing is this, uh, you know, uh, SME, the, the main expert, the main knowledge integration, because mm -hmm. we've tried to do that uh, due to the nature that most of these people are so detached and outside of, you know, uh, our core, uh, you know, uh, thing. Mm -hmm. It it was harder to create that. We have a mm -hmm. channel that is called Domain Experts, but um, essentially what started to work is the just the organic integration into specific tasks. As you may have seen, mm -hmm. the Brendel mm -hmm. guy yeah, yeah. position is jumping in on on calls with te teams, mm -hmm. and he's quite engaged. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not sure how to recreate that you know yeah, horizontal yeah, yeah. thing for experts, but yeah, it, it's. I see what you're valid. saying. And maybe a combination, maybe a combination of them both. So maybe you you maintain you maintain these four vertical structures, and supplement them with a core team, a core a core ML team, and you know. Um, each of these sort of supporting structures, you know, all underpinned by the data set, you know, and yeah, that, but, that's where things get crazy complex. <laughs> but there you go. Um, you get the idea anyway. I don't think it's, I don't think it's much of an issue with the onboarding um, or with, with the resource allocation. Um, and again, I, I listened to what Mark said earlier um, about not, 
in, in introducing too much structure and rigidity and allowing you know the the, the whole um organic growth of, of of what it is that we're doing and it's, it's it's a really 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 fine balance um other than that first step of actually communicating what it is that we're doing um i, I don't know whether and again I'm, I'm not i'm not a huge fan of spreadsheets because well, I, I don't mind spreadsheets per se, but not too many of them because that's an extra dimension them. that people have yes. to think about. And it's, we, an, it's something else to think about, exactly. Yeah, um, and we used to have uh, last week. We used to have a team roster, which publicly listed mm -hmm. out all the people. Mm -hmm. uh, what we learned, first of all, that wasn't secure in terms of exposing all the emails, and we fixed that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, the second thing that we learn is overwhelming nature of having, you know, hundreds of people in one sheet and mm -hmm. they, that was making it impossible to use. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go ahead. The, the reason that I suggest, I mean, you obviously understand the benefit of having something like this. And again, I did mention in that, uh, that other document about we're effectively acting as a data controller and there are legal implications of, of, of doing such things. Um, I think it's, like I say, if, if you could stick it all into a matrix, maybe as a, a Google form at the start um, and anonymize it somehow, I'm not entirely sure how you do it, perhaps one, perhaps one. nevertheless. Okay, so you, let me, I actually, I think I'm getting where you're, going and this is the common theme that emerges right now uh, unfortunately it's way too complex to formalize in any easy way but mm -hmm. here's the thing i truly believe we're uh at the stage of having enough data to efficiently match individuals to the mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of us defining the problem because it's mm -hmm. it's actually a machine learning problem to its core and the more you know the every single day i i'm you know biased by by seeing more and more machine learning problems everywhere but it is a machine learning problem it's an optimization problem to find the most fit person for the for the specific task or need and essentially we already have all of that data we have the key skills we have linkedins we have you know things that people input on the form that they uh, fill out when they join us. And we have some level of, basically there is an emergent structure and we have enough data to support the structure. And not sure if you finished watching that video that I sent over. Uh, a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, basically we already have all the tags. We kind of have tags related to the different tasks. For example, mm -hmm. NLP stack channel is pure mm -hmm. NLP related keywords. And mm -hmm. we have a bunch of people that are listing out NLP keywords. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a you know, basic matchmaking. And we have some of the people doing the onboarding manually kind of serving that function. Like if people know that NLP and NER and whatnot refer to NLP stack, they invite people in there. Mm -hmm. If there's a need for NLP person for a risk factors team, they invite them in there and stuff like that. So it's kind of happening, except mm -hmm. there is no structure and process to support mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks it looks quite involved, the the the, the spreadsheet that you had. And I was I was thinking something much, much simpler. I didn't realize that you had the roster. Um, but literally a list of, of, of key skills um, that, that, that could be helpful matrix artists. Is, uh, transforming that, you know, that whole thing into something also visual as you've done with the, uh, those diagrams mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I keep mentioning it to people and that this is a pattern that sometimes people are mentioning things three, five times. It, mm -hmm. made, it makes sense to them. But mm -hmm. to other people, it, it sounds like a cool idea, but they can't immediately, it doesn't click in their brain, yeah. right? Okay. So maybe you could actually help and visualize how it, you know, how it's mm -hmm. supposed to work. And yeah, yeah. we can actually use that as one of the pieces to the onboarding for coordinators. Sure. 
because that will immediately explain to them like how they can actually do it. Because mm -hmm. I keep sending that Loom video, like you, you have to spend two or three minutes watching it. That's a commitment. And then mm -hmm. there's a huge chance that you won't get it because the information is spread over the three mm -hmm. minutes versus having one visual. Yeah. Piece. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, translating something like the, the PowerPoint or the, the, the PDF that I put together, it, it, it would, I, I can do, I can do something along those lines just, just to, just as a first point of call, because like I say, yep. it's overwhelming when you, you join in this group. And even for me with, you know, I'm fairly confident and I, you know, I'm quite chatty and happy, but seeing all these different groups and all these different people and this is like, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. So yeah. just to centralize that sort of. Here's the right. thing that I want to run by you because you're exactly the person that we're missing in terms of high level thinker that is able not just communicate verbally or through text, but communicate mm -hmm. that visually. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple of people that are capable of that, but that's not their strong skill set. For example, mm -hmm. you may have seen the visual guide, right? how like it separates into technical yes. or not technical. So that was my attempt to, you know, do exactly that. And mm -hmm. I've been mentioning the need for it for a couple of days and, mm -hmm. you know, people get it, but they don't immediately like understand how, how to do it. So then, to, sorry, carry on. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think they understand it's just how to interact with it. What do I do with it? But then I suppose you made it fairly clear. Don't yeah, speak. but before, I mean, this, before we had this picture, no one had, you know, clue how it should look like. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people, I think it was Mark that uh, understood and realized, hey, there is no one that can do it. And I mm -hmm. think I can do it. And he just mm -hmm. drafted that lucid chart. And, mm -hmm. you know, that basically created the, the wave of people, you know, oh, hey, like we can add this, we yeah. can add this, responsible person, Slack channel. Right. And it keeps serving and affecting hundreds of people after mm -hmm. that. We haven't mm -hmm. even touched or iterated uh, on it just because mm -hmm. it serves kind of like 80% of, you know, scenarios for that specific stage. We could mm -hmm. improve it. We could do better. But, mm -hmm. you know, that, that aspect of visualizing is very, very helpful. So here's the thing that I want to throw at you, which is kind of related to the next piece on that circle diagram that mm -hmm. is beyond the, the medical research. And it's really about what are we building here in terms mm -hmm. of a vision, in terms of a template, in terms of the case study of how many more of, you know, you know, collaborations like ours can spin up and work. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I had a call today with Audrey, who is, impact ambassador and she told me exactly what you're saying uh, and she was here since the very first days and she okay. was like there's so much stuff going on i have no idea what's happening anymore but mm -hmm. i get it and it would be great if there was some visual that would explain what you're doing and i think mm -hmm. what you're doing is the actual launch pad the platform mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. activate different people to mm -hmm. build teams ideas around some, um, you know, problems and then just launch them into the wild. And I think it's such a powerful analogy. I had a couple of conversations with Max Patapov about, you know, how the, this launch pad is really the, you know, uh, building rockets, uh, mm -hmm. even though we're, we're, we're building rockets while flying on them, you know, so it's a, it's a continuous process of um, tweaking, but essentially we as a platform, as a launch pad are enabling people to say, Hey, I want to build a rocket. Here's what I need. I need engineers. I need fuel. I need resources. I need all kinds of support. Uh, please give it to me. We supply it and then they fly and then they burn fuel to, you know, battle gravity and, you know, in terms of the outside world, the external world that is um, quite uh, not ready for these rockets mm. to, to be launched. And it's a good analogy. It's a it, really good analogy. Yeah, because we see that gravity, that force that pushes us back in terms of different, you know, 
tools that are not supporting what we're doing, like calendars. Mm -hmm. There's no mm -hmm. easy way f for me to invite 800 people to the call. There is no easy way for me to like expose calendar. There are no easy ways to add people to Trello without friction. There are all yeah. these use cases that the current infrastructure is not supporting. Even mm. in terms of like, we're talking about creating an entity, right? To efficiently work with organizations. Like, should it be the American entity? But hold on, yeah. we're, we're a global thing. Like, and there will be like all kinds of members globally. There will be all kinds of people mm -hmm. that will be helping us globally. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a nonprofit structure for international type of thing? I'm not mm -hmm. so sure. And mm -hmm. that's exactly that gravity, that force that we have to battle and help yep. other teams within those rockets to battle. Yep, yep. This is kind of what I was saying. Like, as much as you want to avoid any structure at all, at some point in order to get the communication and it seems to me each 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 of these teams seem to be operating really well um in in isolation um and i i think there's probably some integration i don't know quite how much but i guess that integration is is mainly sort of propelled by individuals rather than sort of structures um but mark what mark said earlier is absolutely bang on and that you, you know you, you don't need don't need to introduce come up with the solution to the problem and no more and no less um, and 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 grow organically because even if even if it was left exactly as it is now you've got momentum at least it might be chaotic and it might be iterative more iterative than you'd like um, but there's momentum regardless and you can't stop it it's 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 like it's self-propelling, you know, um, which is just fascinating to see. It's, it's incredible. Um, but, yeah, I'm not uh, sure if you've uh, had a chance to watch the video that I sent last night. Have you? Mm. Which one was that? Uh, in that long email update, there is a video and there is a piece of it that talks about, um, about how what we're doing is actually natural, you know, and that's mm -hmm. why it's so viral, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so natural for, for us to want to help each other, to help unite around the common enemy, to be yep. that tribe, to be yep, able yep, yep. to, you know, do things that matter versus mm -hmm. optimizing for some meaningless, you know, corporate mm -hmm. bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's just a, a few things I've got to go. I'm sorry. Well, I haven't got to go now. But I'm sorry. The dog's ripping a slipper apart. <laughs> no um, problem. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just uh, um, I don't I just want to spend maybe five ten minutes going over a few other things that that I came across or that I thought about. Um, Let's do it. So April sixteenth for the first submission. What are the milestones and, and what will it look like? It's 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 very close. It's like it's not it's not far away and it's not ever so important. But even just an idea uh, uh, some some even just a single slide of, of something that maybe looks you know a looks like kind of Tell me uh, output right yeah you know, just even you know it doesn't have to be anything detailed at all um for june the 16th it might be worth doing something a bit in a bit more detail um you know what is it again what is it that we're trying to produce and how is that going to get us to the next goal which is exposing this you know uh, generally to the medical community for, for, for you know who are looking into COVID-19 you know um, what, what support structures are in place to, to you know I, I'm not entirely sure how open source software or whatever it is that we're creating really gets maintained but again just defining something at least um, would be would be, would be and again this is something that maybe we just have a quick 15 minute chat about, we'll stick it in that presentation of, of you know, where um, this is what we're doing. You know, it's a, it's a 20 slides. It just gives somebody an idea and that's what, that's what we're heading towards. Yeah. Um, what, what worked for me uh, showcasing what that is, I created dummy uh, tables on Kaggle um, notebook. Let me show you that, uh, which kind of serves that purpose, but in, oh. if we can create something a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, let me let me take over the screen real quick. Can you see it now? 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the summary page, which the main intention was for Kaggle people just to immediately sure. jump in here and be able mm -hmm. to present this to who or other organizations, but basically having you know, top 10 papers on risk factor analysis across core 19. Right. Risk factor, okay. top paper. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sections of, on stage of disease across core 19. Mm -hmm. Stage of disease sections. Yes. Or things like ev evidence of association of risk factor. Risk factor yeah. smoking, evidence of strength strong, source. Yeah, yeah. And, and if, if I can just have the screen back, I want to, um, where's, where's Bamboo? So, this is something I was thinking about. Um, so we've got um, so we've, we've 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 got the we've got the data um, at the input, and we've got these questions um, that are feeding into um, well, the, the, these these are inputs. We're creating a data set um, effectively. This is if this is what we're doing with 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 the Kaggle competition anyway. Um, and then we're obviously um, curating this. Um, again, this is super simplified. I'm not, you know, you, you've got to bear in mind I'm, I'm um, not, not terribly technical. Um, we're applying some sort of ML in the background. And what we're, what we're doing is the, the, the keywords and the terms and what we're actually looking for um what are they let's, let's call them the task task questions this this is all really manual um what we're doing at the minute and this is where the smes the smes are, are feeding feeding in here and we're using that to produce some sort of output and they're coming at this point like this and so what we're ending up with at the end of the Kaggle competition is, 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 is this, is, is whatever comes out of here. Mm -hmm. But what Let we, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. Um, I guess what we need, to, what we need to end up with is something that's super simple, which is SME and then Corona Y and then an output and I know I know that's super simplifying but rather than rather than being rather than the sort of the SMEs and the keywords all being a manual task and you know um, this is how it's going to work in the end and it's super simple like mm -hmm. it's, it's you know all this all this other clever stuff is going on in the background and blah 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 um, and, and, and it's, it's these sort of targets and goals and, and you know it's it's okay that we're doing all this manual stuff and you know and that with with the the the, the questions are oh, you it was on your screen the questions are you know what are the correlates you know the question isn't what's the best GUI that you can produce mm -hmm. like you know, this is a really you know for for, for Kaggle particularly it's really um you know it's it's, it's really involved with the SMEs and and, and collaborative um. Let me take over screen for a second because sure, what you've okay. shown, I've tried to showcase three days ago. And as I told you, sometimes I deliver these knowledge bombs that mm -hmm. are very hard to understand for, for a reason. And they make sense to people, but they're not immediately actionable. So mm -hmm. let me show you something. Maybe you'll be able to help me actually transform this. So you saw this one? Yeah, I, I thought it was really good. Yep. So basically, that's what you know. More detailed version of that looks like was the yeah. inclusion of um, like this is in the intent of this is to help coordination teams to help teams move faster. Mm -hmm. But essentially, yes, you define questions, you help define knowledge, you help define prioritization, the problems, the inputs, the model, mm -hmm. the outputs, the findings and visual mm -hmm. and unfortunately this process is not just linear uh, linear it's actually no. iterative so you know the risk factors team was reaching this point with the inputs working on keywords and then maya realized that you need to go back all the way back to define the questions to redefine the knowledge 
and prioritize mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Now we're coming to this point again. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, we also have to jump in forward to actually understand what are potential dummy outputs for, for this whole thing and how, how to expose that. So it's kind of like jumping all mm-hmm. over this, this timeline over mm-hmm. and over. And I mm-hmm. feel like the sooner we communicate this process and all these, you know, yes. jumps, the yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can, I can see, I see exactly what you're, what you're saying. And, and it's okay that all of those, all of the detailed tasks and all of the, you know, the, the very, the very fine detail that you've gone into and that it's okay that that's what we're concentrating on for Kaggle. Mm-hmm. Um, and then slowly you broaden you broaden that scope to include you know the the you know how, however however far it, it is that we uh, that we intend to go. Yeah. Um, All right. So here's um, let's summarize it. Uh, okay, just two secs, man. Um, I just just finished these off. Uh, I don't know if there was anything else that I'd um, missed. Um, yeah, centralized command. Blah blah blah. Sponsors and free services. I mean, I guess you've got somebody sort of probing other 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 you know firms for you know sponsorship and and and, and you know, um, freebies given what we're doing um, legal implications we are a data controller if if we're storing people's personal information and stuff mm-hmm. um, and these yeah. are great if you can share them in the communications channel Daniel sure. will greatly benefit Shannon. Uh, and all the people that are trying to actually formalize these because they exist in the heads and Mm -hmm. even some channels we have the legal channel except we don't have we only have one lawyer and we need to do that on the personal information we have a security channel we Mm -hmm. just got a security guy today and had some external person that was helping us so all of these things are very very important even Mm -hmm. though they're not immediately like Kaggle related mm-hmm. we have mm-hmm. to solve them because again like we solved the personal email being exposed when we had 400 people and mm-hmm. if we wouldn't we would expose 800 people to you know possible spam and other things and we will expose even more people we would expose more people if we wouldn't hide it so mm-hmm. these things are long term but we need mm-hmm. to solve them right now sure okay there we go but yeah that's that's that um that's, perfect that's, yeah, that's let that. me summarize the things that i would really benefit from you helping me uh visualize the first one is the matching and in this interconnector something that mm-hmm. is matching uh tasks to teams needs to people coordinators and all of that in, mm-hmm. in one simple visual does mm-hmm. it make sense mm-hmm. the second thing yeah. is visualizing um, actually, I would benefit from you visualizing that vertical horizontal thing and trying sure. to explain how it works now and where it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Specifically, like medical experts is the missing piece as we talk through. Uh, mm-hmm. I will upload the recording of this call so you can just navigate through these and you know mm-hmm. um, get more context of what we talked about. The mm-hmm. third thing is probably... Uh, explaining that extra layer on the circle diagram. I don't think it's a a good idea to introduce that next uh, circle on the diagram, but to have a separate slide that explains this launch pad um, idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, which extra circle? Okay, so you know how you kept adding circles on top and top? Yes. From like Kaggle to uh, health and medical? I think yeah. it will be overwhelming. Yeah, if you go back to <clears throat> to this one, it would be yeah. overwhelming to say that there is one more circle on top, just because okay. like when you reach five, that's already too much. Mm-hmm. But explaining that you know the next step is that launch pad. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, those okay. are okay. Many things. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, uh, and obviously it would be great to have you help uh, with that uh, test-specific timeline, defining questions, inputs, and all of these things. I mm-hmm. think we need some more time to formalize that a bit mm-hmm. to, to visualize. I think, but I think, I think not. If you I have time, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. 
I think I think a lot of it will come down to just milestones and requirements, even if they're very loose, one or two, three or four on a slide. Yeah. Date for April 16th, for June 16th, um, you know? Um, so, yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I just, I was getting fed up with spending my time writing, so I thought... <laughs> I just, you are yeah. spending your time in the best possible way, I'm telling you, man, this is, this is great. There's no one else that is working on that, and please continue. Sure. Um, well, I'm, I'm uh, trying to coordinate, or I'm, I'm going to start trying to coordinate task risk as well, so I mm -hmm. get a feel for just how it is on the yeah. ground, as it were, um, which will help too. So, um, But yeah, there we go. Sounds man. good. Um, if you can just snip any sort of bits out of the video, if you think there was anything maybe personal, like my desktop or anything like that, I'd be really grateful. Um, Sounds good. I don't think there was anything like okay. sensitive, but oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I can send you the link before. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, cool. All right, man. Yeah, that's wicked. So we'll catch up. Catch up tomorrow. I'll do, I'll do what I can. I can't. Again, we're all volunteering and that. What, where, yep. what's, what's your background? Where, where, how have you ended up here? So uh, I come from the. Uh, well, I'm engineer, but uh, I got yeah. bored of building uh, technology and started my own ventures. And then mm -hmm. I uh, started a venture studio here in LA, which basically mm -hmm. is a mix of startup incubator and consultancy. And mm -hmm. basically my, my day job is working in extreme uncertainty and mm -hmm. pushing out something that you know solves a problem, which is exactly what, what I'm kind of doing here. Hey, right, now it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it makes sense. Awesome. I'm not just some superhuman that suddenly became, you know, um, able to to solve these type of uh, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I yeah. had some background in in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, I just need someone to press a button, right? I just need someone to press a button. So yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, yeah, we'll catch up. We'll catch up soon. All right. Thanks, man. Bye. All right, take it easy. Bye.